minutes from previous meeting or meetings. We only had one meeting, so make a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting Tuesday, July 10, 2018. Second. I have a motion and a second for approval of meetings from Tuesday, July 10th, 2018. Julie? Aye. Tom? Aye. Mike? Aye. Brian? Aye. Claims and payroll? No questions. There were no questions? There were none. Awesome. We'll make the motion to approve the claims and payroll. Second. We have a motion and a second for approval of claims and payroll. Julie? Aye. Tom? Aye. Mike? Aye. Brian? Aye. Manor report? Jerry? Good evening. Good evening, Good evening sir. Good to see you. Glad to, glad to have you back. Good to see you, Bert. <laughs> not, a, not a whole lot happened in July. We did have a couple of burglaries. Worked on right now. There are several suspects that we're working with. Other than that, we had a lot of social service calls in town, a lot of dog barking complaints. But other than that, has not been too bad in July. It's been too hot for anything else. Anything yeah. outside. <laughs> That's been taken care of. <laughs> Nothing we can do about it tonight, but I was just wondering if there's any kind of a trend or change over time here. I looked at 14, and in 14 there was seven thefts for the year, and so far this year we've had nine. And in 14 there were five vandalism for the year, and so far this year we've had 13. That, that's not a good trend. It's not a good trend, but sometimes as you go through life, especially in school, as we know, some grades are just a little more rowdy than other grades are, and we're to that point where we knew the last four or five years it was coming to where we were going to have more issues with certain groups of people in that certain age group than what we've had before. That's kind of what. Plus, it seems like it's been a really hot and rainy summer, and school starting, so now they're really starting to get active before school starts. One last hurrah before school. <laughs> yeah. I see there were three dogs at large and three um, dogs barking. I know there was a dog that I heard of that was chasing. Um, kids up by the Zion school. Right. I was also walking one night and this dog was um, barking and following me the whole way. Same dog? Mm -hmm. The same little dog. Was, um, since that dog's been chasing kids, is that considered aggressive now? If it's chasing exactly aggressive, that would be a dangerous dog, yes. Okay, because the I know um, Bruce was called on it, and Bruce. did he write a ticket? I know Tyler wrote one that next or maybe Tyler. night. That night or the next morning, he wrote a ticket to them. So if it's chasing the kids, would that be considered then, or was it just what was the ticket written for? Or was it just for a dog running at large? Just dog running at large. Okay. It didn't have tags on it or anything. Not that I, know. I know I'm just stating that for the record. It's Some to the north of put their eggs on the Lindsay Stewart, they have a couple dogs. I don't know top my head if I okay. sure. <laughs> Also, I know in the past months we've brought up different um, unlicensed vehicles that have been like on the streets and parked and stuff like that. Do you know, did, has Bruce started like a spreadsheet or anything to kind of keep track of these and where they are and how they're being taken care of? Do you know? I know he's been working on several and I know some have been gone or taken care of. I don't see him getting licensed, but he's seen gone. But I don't know if he had a whole list because I've never seen one. I don't know. I guess 
that'd be something I'd like to see if it was, you know, people reported or if like it's gone list. or if it's still sitting there. Yeah, how it's getting depleted or crossed off. I don't know if that's something that, you know, we could talk just because I know the last few months there's been a lot every month. Well, one of the main ones, Jerry, is check with Bruce is that Spies property down there that's getting to be a, a, a residential, I don't think it's salvage yard or whatever. Okay. We need to check, we need to check in on that and get that cleaned up. can do that. And I think the people living in the brown house across from Hufferts, that van that they were driving around, that was never licensed or registered and I just, I think it'd be nice if there was like a list of them all and okay, this one was taken care of, this one was taken, just housekeeping, you know. <coughs> we can do a list on street lights so there's no reason we can't do that too. That'd be great. resolution in order to formally accept this award um, and I gave Bruce the work plan for it so he had some time to review that but Mike was going to draft it up and we had until September 24th to get that done so we won't do that tonight. Um, so that money is going to create a $105,000 revolving loan fund to assist our new and emerging businesses. We've got three waiting in the wings to use this money already so it'll be kind of nice. On the IRP our application was submitted on July 26th. Um, they told us there's $8.2 million available for funding. Applications are totally $13 million. The average application score in the system is 140. Ours is coming in at 175. So we have a very good chance of getting funded, but we're in the lot what they consider the last quarter of the year. So when you submit an application to the USDA and it doesn't get funded the first time, it rolls for the next three quarters. So all of the applications that have not been funded for the last three quarters are still in the pot with ours. And they can either choose to fund those because they have money now and then push ours off to the next quarter, or they can fund ours because we have a higher score and it's just a better application. So we'll just have to wait and see how that shakes out. For ECAP, one of the things that came out on the Culture Change Committee is that the community was asking us to maybe rebrand. So new logo, new tagline. Um, four brand marketers were identified. Prior to pursuing one of them, Brooke Curtis asked if the news office could have first shot at creating the logo. He thought being local and passionate about Plainview maybe would give him an edge, and he offered to do it for free. So Darren Arlton and I said, okay, <laughs> give it a shot. And he did. Um, we had that meeting last Thursday night. Um, we didn't have a huge turnout from the community, but about 10, 11 people. And what was nice about it is we got to see three design logos, tons of different slogans and taglines. The community was able to, it was interactive, was able to throw out their suggestions. They were redrafting revisioning on the spot, taking suggestions. So they've taken all of that information, they've gone back, they're compiling all of that, and we're tentatively looking at August 29th as the final community meeting to see those three designs, um, or how those designs work out, and then we'll choose two or three of them to put out to the community, the community will do a public vote. Whichever one wins would be our new tagline and logo, if for some reason this group who's attending the August 29th meeting is not in love with any of the designs, doesn't feel like any of them really should be the face of Plainview, we will go to one of the outside brand marketers and start the process over again. Um, entrepreneurial cultural, that was another one that came out of ECAP. The group wanted to see a more vibrant and active business chamber. At the last business chamber meeting, um, I brought up um, some of the things that they were looking to offer, which is financial planning, business advice. There are free resources available to us. Um, so they've asked me to start bringing these people to the chamber meetings to meet with, to meet with them. Um, so the first two sessions are gonna be QuickBooks training, 
and the second one is going to be social media and marketing assistance for our chamber. Um, Northeast Nebraska Business Development Network, we had this meeting, it's a monthly meeting that we have. <coughs> Last month it was in Pierce, hosted by Justin Arnold, our new UNL Extension Rep. He was focusing on all of the community vitality programs that the university has. Since we just went through one of those programs, which is ECAP, he asked us to come and be a guest speaker, so we did. Um, we had a really good response to that. We've had a lot of communities uh, email and call wanting the Google link to all of our surveys and our results because they're interested in doing that in their communities as well, so that went well. Um, on the Department of Economic Development from the state, Mike and I hosted Lindsay Jessen yesterday um, here in Plainview. She heard our presentation on ECAP and uh, wanted to hear more about some of our recent successes, discuss our future goals, and talk about how the DED can help with some of those things. And then we took her on a, a $5 tour of Plainview. Uh, we identified some open sites that we had. One of the things that she does is she knows of the businesses in the area that are looking to expand or they're looking for a new site or they're looking for a different headquarters. So having those identified spots in our community is nice because if she hears of something that's <coughs> hit, then they bring those people here. Um, on July 18th, we were able to host Senator Breezy um, with economic developers and state administrators from District 41. The senator um, expressed a desire to have follow-up meetings later on in the year, so he did enjoy his time here. Um, there's a little bit of a meeting recap there about some of the things that we talked about. Um, in other notes, I have an update on our farm supply store. They are looking at a soft opening on August 20th and a grand opening on August 31st. I don't know if you've noticed all the boxes and there's just been a lot of work going on, so they're getting ready to go. And then on the volunteer side, um, still assisting the Pierce Fire Department. Um, I helped them get a grant for 4250 from the Nebraska Forestry Service, and they are going to go after the FEMA grant for some breathing apparatus equipment. So we're getting ready to work on that too. That's a little bit through um, Pierce County Economic Development too. Questions? in the library finally set up. Yeah, but I don't try and work at it. So. <laughs> you try it. <laughs> <laughs> you try it. Well, uh, go down to that library uh, exit on the <laughs> south side. Yeah, I saw it. on both sides. I yeah. saw what you got to put in. So they tried. <laughs> <laughs> they did, it was about the same thing. <laughs> That's a tough spot because it's so... It's a bottom oh, of the ground. Yeah, there's a piece that comes over and it's sloping, so then yeah, yeah. that's a tough one. You'd almost yeah. have to read that from the west some way and, and just have it barely right at Well, you're going to have to put a drain in here and put a tile, put it down to the other end. And then you yeah, that's a, a weird little flat spot on that street mm -hmm. right there. If it's more than a trickle, it's not going to flow. Or it's it's got to be more than a trickle. Well, if Donna will, we need to adjust some sprinklers in the library too. I mean, she needs to put one of our grass and out the street. So. You tried. Yeah. For where we are with the nitrate, it's still pretty high. Banshell, we had that rebuild. Uh, I think it was what 17.3, and I tested the why is that is special test 10.1. 1, so I'm going to order another one and see if we can. But then I'll have to go back and uh, test for the last what, eight years, so we can try to get that one put back online. So band shell, <coughs> I don't know. What That's a lot of, to overcome there. So. We have about literally five different expert opinions on what to do with uh, the van shell well, and we just have to weigh them out and present them. Everything from spreading out to going down to making it more round to punch through another hole <coughs> or get rid of it completely. Has anybody considered that it's all the same water or whatever are they do? Oh, I tell you what, it's, it's amazing.
with what they know. Did, what happened with this one that you you approved the one well and it did get better? No, that's, that's been on that's been on emergency status for. But they put new walls and lowered it and all this. Did it make any difference? They didn't lower it. They just uh, revamped it. They revamped and redid it. We we still oh, have a hole in the punch in that, but. Uh, the, the hope there was uh, well, it needed to be uh, repaired and um, upgraded, but the hope was there that it would be, uh, there's uh, so many, what's the word I'm looking for now? Uh, uh, more pressure. The efficiency. The efficiency would, it would be better and that it might um, lower, you know, at the same time, according to Sergeant, which is one of the uh, experts, and they are, Sergeant's a very good operation, but uh, I, I began to wonder, so. Was that a well test by the school? That one's all right, I mean, that yeah. school well was, uh, and that's, was that that's the big six? kicker there, you're blocking halfway. <laughs> that's, you know, yeah. That's probably right at five. Different vein or something. That yeah, must be. The wise that well was, was off the charts crazy, eight man. years ago. And at 10-1, that is uh, phenomenal. phenomenal. I mean, it's beyond belief. Now, whether he continues to test out, we have to do eight years worth of expedited testing. They don't make you go through all of it, but they're wanting to see a lot of tests to test it out. So, and if YSF can go back onto the, the system and test out well, literally well, then it will, um, th you know, then we'll have three. We can always operate right now, currently, with two. Two in the water tower is sufficient for a city of this size, and we've been on that for some time now. In the foresight of someone, somewhere, somehow, we have four wells, you know, and uh, there are many communities that have, some just have one, which is an accident waiting to happen. But what are they testing across the board? Why this? Is it five? Why ZEP is actually the last one, which is the, uh, well that was shut down for the last eight years, 10.1. Well. Well. Yeah, the school well by Celine is the yeah. one that's way I mean, it's that new well, or they average about five. So the new one's down here. Down the new one's down there, yeah. yeah. Is that Manchil well flow? A lot of water, or is it? Uh -huh. so that's the worst pump we really got. wouldn't be out anything if it got no. shuttered. No. It'd be nice to have YZF as your... Yeah, yeah it would be put, just... Put, sure. So we're kind of in that swap. You know, we're not quite there yet, though. Yeah, efficiency of the van shell well is by far... Yeah, the that's, a, that's the worst pump in all that. It's not a... If we, put, <coughs> if we put that on emergency, it's not a big deal. Plan B is something down. should blow, or not blow up, but I mean, something should cause us even more concern mm -hmm. when you go to a blending. But that's going to have us... Uh, put in blending the way DHHS wants it done, not the way we believe it should be done. So there'll be some costs there if we had to go that route. That's plan B. Plan D or E would be uh, way down the line, drilling new well, but we don't want to go there, but obviously we're going to be looking at this every year, every quarter. Well, it seems like when the water table's high, that's when the nitrate on that one is very high. And we're high. Yeah. Really high. Pump still running now? Yep. <laughs> I see they're starting to irrigate. Hopefully that'll slow them down. Well, it's like the country club out there. That's the worst. It's, I, I don't know if the table's that high or what. It's backed up all the way down to uh, Free Fairway. Right. Yeah. You got water yeah. just coming out. Cat tails growing out there. Yeah. No, it really doesn't make it hard because <laughs> that's usually where I end up. So, Kurt, did you ever uh, check that uh, water shut off at the old uh, at Rick House down by the Six Club? I can't think of his name. Well, uh, let me see his face. Yeah. Oh, Rod. Rod, yeah. Yeah, Rod. Uh, Rod Cook. Rod Cook. Rod Cook. Oh, yeah, it's curb stuff. Yeah, we got. I got located in it, but I haven't done it yet. No. Yeah. Poor <laughs> Paul, Hope, please. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got a locate called in on it. So. Okay. 
I don't know what's wrong with it. But we might just need a new uh, curb box. I want to commend Kurt for uh, this last month in particular. I mean, I won't always do this, but we'll always have our uh, conversations. But this last month, being shorthanded um, without Troy, this is really a two man for their experience show. And Troy's been gone a lot of the month, rightfully so. And Kurt, did, instead of saying anything or complaining, just picked up the ball and took Bill and Russ did his job and they just uh, picked up the slack. And Troy is back now and um, came in today and you know, done some street sweeping and some of the things we need to catch up on for the fall. And he's going to be doing some things with the electric plant. But um, in, in all fairness, and, and I'm talking to the choir here, it's. Uh, uh, been a tough month. I've been with these guys a long time, and this uh, this one hit pretty close to home, pretty hard. Agreed. Anybody else got a for Kurt? We're, uh, we ever going to get, I think we talked about that before, uh, shoot this straight to see what we can do for the drainage? So we could just get that moment. In fact, we have uh, Gary, the engineer, coming up on that step project. I'll ask him to go and he'll shoot that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Just shoot it to see what the, the, the apron's got to be higher or whatever than the dirt in the ditch or something. Or something. It'd be nicer to get that straightened out. Maybe have him shoot it. Just do that. You know, if you want to mark it down some with Gary, just make sure we ask him when he's here. supposed to go out um, near the health board and where we're at with one house in particular. I would assume yeah. the one house is yeah, yeah, in particular. Yeah, it's a one house. Um, letters did go out, yes. so I can answer that question. Yeah. Um, and they've all been summoned uh, as far as what they need to do in the time frame. Uh, it's not on this agenda, but we'll have to meet again to see, put them back on if they're ready. Um, I went by it last night uh, from an outside, not to, since there was no action. I can tell you it doesn't look like much. It's kind of a, still of a creepy little place over there. So I think we need to kind of push that envelope would be number. my suggestion to the health board and okay. you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Well, I think they were advertised to run out, so they should be in good shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah I put a red sign out front, so it must be all good. <laughs> <laughs> I took care of that. <laughs> but I mean, I would say we'll follow it up and yep. make sure that that's what we put on the, the health board to go ahead and not let it continue on. You're going to wait till budget's up? Yeah, yeah, I've okay. only got about a couple things. So. Okay. Uh, moving on. Number five, mayor appointment to the zoning board. Um, I couldn't find anybody to do this really, and then I had a thought, so I talked to Mike, and between the two of us, we got Mr. Boyer, Mr. Dean Boyer, to say yes for the zoning board. So with your blessing, I would like to appoint Dean Boyer to the zoning board. I'll make a motion to approve Mr. Dean Boyer for the mayor's appointment for the zoning board. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second for approval of Dean Boyer to the zoning board. Julie? Aye. Tom? Aye. Mike? Aye. Brian? Aye. Aye. Um, line six, ball backers year end review. Pretty successful summer. 
Um, had about 182 kids playing from 4 to 18, again, 4 to 19. Um, had four tournaments this year hosted. Three of them were, were pretty good size. Um, the one Clown Days tournament, I think we had 13 teams over two days. Um, had a 10 and under tournament that was 15 day, 15 teams, sorry, over six days. So had, had a lot of people in town for a few of those. Um, football started, our little, little kids football just started this week, have 28 signed up for that. We've also been asked to help with volleyball, the little girls volleyball. So I think we got 24, 25 signed up for that. That awesome. starts next week. So. Staying busy, um, only a couple things. I talked to Mike a little bit about it. We got some buildings up at the city, up, up at the ball fields that are in rough shape. Just trying to get clarity. We pay for it, do we get help with it? How, how do we go about the bathrooms up there? We just put a roof on it last week. We were afraid it was gonna get past, past the point of no return there. Um, not half of it, I'd say a third of it was rotted out underneath, new sheeting, the whole thing. Um, the siding's falling off. Just wondering what we do, how we do it. Is that our responsibility? Is that the city's responsibility? We've never really gone there before, so I don't know. That, that's, that's one thing coming up in the near future, um, and maybe a little later future, the grandstands. I don't know, burn it down, tear it out. I, I don't know what's next. So and then the only other sat right where he, where he was at when that was passed the first time, and all I could do was shake my head. So the only other thing we got going on is just damn much vandalism out there, and I, I don't know. Um, so far, we've been taking care of all of it. I think a camera system is in the near future for us. I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what to do. But that's the big thing is the bathrooms at the little kids' field. Um, is needing some help. Just don't know how to go about fixing it. If that's our deal, if that's the city's deal, if that's our deal as a whole, all of us, I don't know. So that's, <coughs> that's the only question I pose, I guess. I have, I have no problem with the agreement that was uh, written again going forward to the bathrooms. We never really, I mean, the roof, and they, they pretty well did and took care of it, so. Just last week and the roof was taken care of. Good, yeah. But I, I would say, I have a budget issue then working with the auditor and that, so I would, that would be something on the uh, uh, utility side that we would budget in and probably try to take care of it. Because they do need a little help, right, Kurt? <laughs> Kurt, don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and, and the idea, you know, depending, here's, here's where we stand. If we don't get any help from the city, we're willing, we, we already put the roof on, we'd be willing to side it. we got to stop there, though. That's, that's all our budget would allow. The grand plan of it is uh, to go in and take those bathrooms out and put new toilets in, new floor coverings in. I mean, they're, they're in rough shape. New doors, the doors that are there, only three years old, Tim put them in, but they've all been kicked in. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to keep kids. You can't. And it's the same kids that are up there enjoying the fields playing ball. So I, it, it blows All they do is change age, but it's the same kids. That, I mean, you just watch them different years kick the door. And, and, and I, I did get a quote today for cameras, and, and that's, I mean, that's the next step for us. And it's, <laughs> but we got hit with the, with the big one through town when they were keying up cars. That's when they threw the new crow's nest. They threw baseballs through the windows. Um, just last week, somebody kicked in the door of the grandstand. How's the prosecution going on? That is a heck of a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I, I do know, in, in, in all fairness, now, Jerry, I don't know how much you got involved, but I do know they've been reported because if they come in to us, I know Blake's done, I mean, they are reported. I oh, absolutely. I, I called Yostin right away. He came up and took pictures. Um, this one's a whole separate incident at the grandstand. They just kicked that in in the last week and a half or so. I mean, cameras are the, are the first thing. We're, we're going to do it. Um, we're seven or eight hundred bucks for that, but I, I, that's a drop in the bucket compared to two or three windows broken, really. Oh, plenty high. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do the, uh, since this is all on the same subject, but almost a side thought, how do the cameras, say, for the C&D 
construction or the um, uh, ball fields work on a wireless to the system we're already paying for? Because we've already got, could I, is it possible to wire something up? Or no, those, those are pretty well standalone units. I have a wireless link to the shop here. That's how you're getting these cameras. Right. But at any distance, that, that doesn't really, I mean, past a block and a half, that, that link's no good for passing data anymore. So we have to go back to the um, trail cam type of thing. Well, back to the trail cam. We, we can do standalone units. I mean, I just priced them today for the ball fields, and we're right at about 900 bucks for a four camera system. Um, Where's your base unit set there? It's in, well, it's it in would, the building there and they're kicking the doors in. What we would do <laughs> is they do make lock boxes about like a gun safe, leg bolts into the building. The wires come through a grommet in the back. They gotta work awful hard to get to it. I mean it is it's a gun safe, it's heat resistant, it's the whole thing. But if they want to get to it and they get it, we have none. Um, the thing about those standalone units is you don't have to have internet to them. The only thing the internet provides, you know, is live viewing. So standalone unit up there or C and D wherever, if you notice something amiss within three weeks, then you can just go back locally and rewind and look through it. Does that clear everything or? What's that? How long does that last? So Depends on how many cameras. Um, I know. The city system that we put in, it's how many cameras? Nine? Nine. Nine cameras. Ten. Ten, ten. ten cameras. I put a, a large hard drive in that. That's like a four terabit hard drive. I'm guessing those ten cameras go about five weeks. So if something's missing, if something's broken, you do have to notice it in that five weeks. Or at five weeks in one day, it starts recording. Recording over? Yeah. Yeah. I always thought it was close to 30 days, but five weeks is probably yeah, closer. yeah, with that size. So it's. Um, It'd be nice if it was immediate, like a trail camera, but had it Bluetooth to your phone. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that. Mm -hmm. So it would alert the officers if there was down there. And, and, and that that's a, that's a possibility. Um, the problem with it is every time a stray dog runs in front of it. Right. Right. Every time out of the ball field skunks, I mean, yeah. in town, dogs, anything, so that's that's all a possibility, it's just... Just be nice to have it immediate, so... Absolutely, absolutely. I know we've put a lot of them in around town, and it seems like every time the town gets hit with a new string, that's three or four more systems we end up putting in for the phone office, so... How about just a common alarm? Yeah. Alarm inside the bathroom. And the yeah. No, and and all right those things would take. Not turned off. Yeah, an alarm like that would take a phone line. I mean, but yeah. In something like that for the off season, absolutely. When nobody's up there for seven months out of the. Or are you talking if somebody, you know, that we flip a switch when you leave? Last guy leaves, you flip a switch. Well, any kind of thing. Yeah. homeowner's alarm, you know, if the door comes open and it is. Turned off Light, the car lights and sounds and sirens. sirens and suddenly you get sirens. Well, I would get somebody. And the problem we're running into is nobody's oh, after anything. All they know all we no. got is candy bars and pop. They just want to break stuff. Yeah. Well, there's that like the ring camera system that mm -hmm. you can put on your doorways mm -hmm. that notifies you immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be I'm sorry cheaper <clears throat> than nine hundred dollars. Absolutely. I know Absolutely. The only thing with that is it is a reoccurring fee for ring. Right. Um, and data has to be available there. You have to have internet okay. at the spot. Um, now we provide internet up there for the ball season for free. I, I don't know what they would do for the year long thing. I, I don't know. And really, if you can just hang a camera, it makes a lot of people think twice about even being around there if it's just physically there. So oh, yeah, and you run, the camera, and they look, see that camera. Is that camera working or not? And they, you they'll know. go find somewhere where they know there's not one right. in a hurry. Um, what, what's the situation with just nightlights? They're on the little concession stand. Um, they come on at. Plenty of light there. Plenty of light. And we put. Are they action motivated? No, they're just 
they're just honest and dusted on. They're dusted well, on lights. There's the 15 of them around it. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, it's lit up. The thing <laughs> is, is if anybody's on the north side of that, don't matter how bright it is. I mean, the only person in the world that can see it is somebody at Ashburn's back deck, right? I yep. mean, nobody, they're on the north side of that. Nobody's driving in there. Nobody's, and we haven't had a big problem there. It's just been kids breaking things. Just windows, doors. How far away is it? Those cameras like pick up stuff that's visible. Um, daytime, a hundred feet, nighttime, 75. So, I mean, you put a system up there, you put three or four around the main concession stand, bring one over to the crow's nest and one at the grandstands. And like I said, I think that's all something we would do as ball backers. Our, our big thing is we just the buildings, we just don't know whose responsibility that is. Is that is that on us? I mean, there's things that need to be done. We just, I don't know. If they're, if they're city buildings, then we need to get a couple toilets, or, I mean, not the $800 toilet, but the, you know, 100 Is it $200 to $300 toilet? Yeah. So. Kind With of the elongated seats, we'll make them nice. Sure. <laughs> cool for the season. Well, and we, we put together a really, we put together a really rough price list. I, I think that's just what, I mean, if I had anything, like I said, I'm, I'm prepared on my end from the budgeting side, so I'm not too worried. I think it would behoove the ball backers to go ahead and uh, price list things out, you know, kind of your wish list, and mm -hmm. then do the presentation in the spring, and we can kind of hit at it. And I think one of those would be, uh, you know, to look at the, the stuff that needs to be put into the buildings, and. Even the crow's nest, I asked Blake about that because that was that was a tough hit. You know, I had to go announce uh, after the vandalism. The and, night after. Yeah, the night after, and I had my hand trying to avoid glass on this side. I mean, and it was there was nothing stolen. It was just vandalism. So, so we do need. I, I think you know, we were just talking about this too, and that we probably while the ball backers are here on a friendly note, we that fence. We need to figure out kind of where we stand um, with the fence because it's all in. We got the you know bills and stuff. I know the ball. Absolutely. Um, but what were you thinking? I mean, what were you thinking? I mean, I just. I mean, uh, we did. We left that night not knowing for sure. Um, whatever, whatever you guys are are thinking. We were asked to go. Maybe look for some private donations, and we did come up with a thousand dollars private donations for that. Um, but but I, I don't know. I don't I don't know what we. I mean, it was a year ago we talked about it with the council, and I. There was never really, uh, you guys pay this, you guys pay that, that I, that I can remember. Yeah, I think there might have been something said. It's just as long as we need, we need to always make sure because that ball backer agreement, we work hand in hand. As long as we work together, I think at one time we talked about half, which it was a seven thousand dollar fence. But we know the ball backers don't have it. But you know, is it a thousand? But we probably this is the night when we're talking about ball backer agreement and going forward, what the council. You know, was expecting or anything like that. So absolutely, and we we talked about possibly coming back later in the year for a keynote grant to pay for some of that. So, so this is a good conversation to have because I don't know. I, I don't know when it's it gets really gray when it's city property. Ball backers putting money into it, and here's our only concern is so we and it's happened in other towns, and that's the only reason it's a concern. So we put a whole bunch of funds into a concession stand. And I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it has. In three or four years, somebody comes in and wants to rent that concession stand from the city, and now ball backers has got out of it. We have, we have no right to that concession stand. We have, you know, that could go away any time. So for us to put a large amount of our budget into it's hard. But to sit and have tournaments here and see it falling down around itself is hard too. So that's, you know, that's the big reason we jumped in put a roof on before we knew who was paying for it. I mean, we paid for it, obviously, but to go any further, we don't know. Yeah, I think that just, uh, you know, for clarity's sake, just uh, the, the idea is, and it's tough when you put money, and I know Kevin's back there, put a lot of time and a lot of effort. Unfortunately, at least from my perspective, and the council should know, it's simply the city's property, mm -hmm. end of story. So anything that goes on, unfortunately, it's like 
you're donating, like even the scoreboards, mm -hmm. uh, the ball backers, you know, went after them and did a great job. But unfortunately, they become when I do the liability and the insurance, and I insure all those uh, through our carrier, and that's just considered all city property, including the concession stand. So. Absolutely, and, and like I said, my concern, it just happened in Albion this year, is their ball program got cut out of their concessions, okay? So a family member of somebody there came in and said, I want those concession stands for the summer. That looks like a moneymaker. So now the ball program's out of it, which, which that'd be fine, except the ball program doesn't want to put all our funds into a building. Mm -hmm. It's not yours. That, that's not ours. It's a simple matter to add to the agreement that if they're going to make improvements, they get it for four years, or they get it for six years, or Absolutely. something. When do you can stop? Well, the person I still have, and probably like this too, the person I have, uh, the copies, we have the ball agreement, ball backers agreement several times. I remember going through it over and over and over again and, and talking about the details. And I, I don't have any problem because uh, I know what the ball backers have done uh, for the, uh, unfortunately, like I said, you just have to know that if, at this point in time, if they decided to put a $1 million facility out there in the ball field, it's got to go and it would have to be, unless you added some agreement, the city's property. They would donate it back. So, there, I mean, there's just no ownership oh, out there. We so. absolutely get that. I mean, we right. poured cement up there. We built a crow's nest. We know those those aren't our buildings. Um, and and here's what I'm thinking: if if the city can make those buildings inhabitable, I mean, make make the roof decent, make the siding decent, any upgrades that want to be done internally, I mean. There's things inside that, that could be done. I mean, then I could see that being a ball bag of responsibility. Any, you know, we're, we're trying to make the concession stand bigger or trying to make, you know, but the roof and the structure of that building isn't there. I mean, the roof is now. I mean, you can, the, the structure itself, the... Well, you make it bigger if you're gonna have to get rid of your story. Right? Well, and, and that's, what, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. I mean, we have the school, we bought a new shed from them, a 15 by 15 shed that will be placed up there and become city property, obviously. <laughs> um, and that's gonna be our storage. So you take the storage and make that concession stand. I understand that's an upgrade that the city doesn't care happens one way or the other. So maybe that's on ball backers. But the building itself is, is kinda where I'm at a crossroads. Is that us, is that you? I think, I think as a city as a whole, we have a responsibility to, to keep maintain that building. Mm -hmm. I mean, that'd be my thought is, you know, it is city property and you don't want it to go to pot or it's gonna cost more money, you know. And, and that, that roof was probably seven or eight years late, if I had to guess by looking at it. I mean, it was, we had to tear sheeting off and replace all of it. It was, it was in rough shape. But and we do. We have a we have an awesome group of six eight volunteers that show up for every project like that and put labor into it. Um, so you so guys, you did that, paid for it, whatever that part. Of it, right? That's paid. We we did it. It's done. It's. I mean, we we didn't. It seems like springtime comes along and we have so darn many projects up there. So anything we can get done in the fall, and that was the idea of getting this. And plus, we didn't know that it would survive another winter. With, with the amount of water that was coming through the, the roof on the south side. Well, but then if the siding's falling off, you still have blowing snow that's going to get in behind that siding, and then you're the gonna siding's in bad shape. Um, and and the the reason the siding's in bad shape, and I think Mike said one time that building was 21 years old. Mm -hmm. yes. But it was seamless siding, the plastic stuff, and at a baseball field with claw balls and baseballs yes. thrown around. I mean, you can tell. Vandalism. You, the vandalism on the doors, but you could tell every hole from a baseball that a kid didn't catch on all sides of it. So, so the siding's rough, and it just seems like we got a lot to be proud of up there with a lot of things. And then you got that eyesore right in the middle of it. Not only an eyesore, but then the bathrooms that are just mm -hmm. they're awful. They're awful. terrible. They're just they're just rough. Are the bathrooms like I haven't been up there for years. Uh -huh. Are the bathrooms adequate? They just need 
move? Uh, I I don't know. I mean, the the Saints the Saints all pretty, yeah, pretty heavy, and the Saints are stained up. I think we put a couple new toilets. The toilets are residential; they're not commercial. Which, but I mean, the bathroom is all for. Oh yeah, absolutely. If you the urinals junk, I mean, while they go in there and throw rocks and gravel in there and plug everything up, you know, it's like you know where that thing's got to run clear down. I don't think I can put cameras in the bathroom. That might be (laughs) (laughs) pushing the limit. Yeah, I might say something about that. (laughs) But but we have those big tournaments there. And the guys go in the bathroom and don't care. It's it's the ladies that you hear loading up in a car and headed to Casey's because they're yeah. they're teased out by the women's bathroom up there. That That's are. one of my pet peeves. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, we've done we've put fresh coats of paint on. We painted floors. It's it's just past that point. It's almost. And I I think the bones are all right. I think take it back to studs and. Do some of that milk barn paneling that you can hose down if you need to. I, I don't know. I, I think maybe what we need right to do huh? at this point in the line is just have them get a list of what is needed and maybe a cost. But I don't know if we, could, if we can buy that stuff cheaper or like the stools and stuff. Or well, we, we go to Wynn Nelson and you, I mean, we get a wholesale. So. I mean, the, and I think that, you know, it basically what's been, and and Blake knows too, is that we go year to year, and uh, to be honest, each year has seen some great improvements. Uh, you know, so keep in mind, I think this is the next logical step, take care of that building. So I'm all on board mm-hmm. no matter what. But you know, last year we put in, how much did it take to put in that water system? Oh, uh, it was probably between eight and 10,000. You know, so we did that, I mean, so, Absolutely. and those are the kind of things, I mean, you probably won't see as much, mm-hmm. But it's not like that those ball fields each year that, that we don't have a capital improvement budget to do something with. And I know I'm going to need lighting. There's just things that will have to be done. get way ahead of the improvements with your cameras and alarms, or you're just sacrificing the Sacrifice, yes. This is a, And it has been a bad year for just strict, strict onlyness. It, it is. And, and they're, they're not they after anything. anything. They, they just want to price something. I would I would say from this point forward, if you guys could get a list of what's needed okay. and stuff, and, and bring it down, bring it down, and and maybe a price list, get a curve to you and price stuff up and see where it's going. Absolutely, and I I came up with price. and it's not an ungodly amount. I mean, we were at I think sixty four hundred before the roof was done, and we took care of that part of it. So. I mean, it's not an un- ungodly amount, and and the reason we can keep that price down is we have five or six pretty good guys with a hammer willing to put in a weekend here and there. So, so yeah, we're. Was that Kevin? I saw fall off the ladder a few times. Kevin? No, he doesn't get very high. <laughs> He's about an eight footer. <laughs> um, but yeah, and wh- whatever you guys think with the fence, I mean, I. I don't, I don't know where we left that last year. Um, so well, my recollection, like I said, from the, the at the time we did that was you know half. We put in half no matter what. And uh, but you know if you're got you're sitting at a thousand, you put in money to the uh, concession stand. You know I mean you, I'm I'm understanding. I mean they're putting money in to improve technically our fields, which I think was part of the purpose of the ball backers too to provide. Absolutely, and and the thing I hope everybody kind of understands is that's also the reason we're getting some of these tournaments here and, and I know it doesn't bring a lot of money to town but we had a pile of people here eating at Subway, eating at Casey's filling up with gas, stopping a family dollar I mean at the beginning of the season the people that call me and ask for a schedule so they can be staffed properly, Subway every year they want to know baseball schedules so they can have the proper staff on nights when we have three or four games in town so uh, Casey's the same way. They they always want the schedule. And the reason that tenant under tournament came here was because the place that was supposed to have the tournament, their fields weren't adequate. They didn't have anchor line. They didn't have. They only had lights on one field. They no longer had concession stands there that were there, so they couldn't afford the umpires on the backside of it. So 
there's there's good things happening because of it also. So, yep, and and whatever whatever you think we can get prices, um, if we can get anything done in the fall, boy, it sure saves us in the in the spring too with with a lot of stuff going on. And I know that's a tight timeline, but we got a lot of guys that farm and spring they're planting, so if we can work around harvest a little bit. There's our volunteers. So it is a tight timeline. It is. It absolutely is. So well, if we do that, get, get, get some prices and stuff, and do a curd or whatever, Mike, and okay. see what we're see where we're at. Yeah. No, I'll I'll talk to Curd if he can get pricing on the plumbing fixtures. Um, I mean, that's so that's. You get on a wet Nelson, and it's cheaper to go there than it is on ours. Yeah. And, and, and Menards is too. residential, and, and we really need something. But, and, and the next thing, Ballbackers, I, I believe we have a meeting tomorrow night, we'll talk about it. But I'm sure we'd be at the point of putting cameras in at our expense out of that, just to, I mean, to build a building and then have to replace windows on it in six months, financially, that doesn't work for us either, so. Well, that'd be money well spent on the camera, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, price of whatever, you, I, I'm not an expert on that. I know that security is very important, mm -hmm. but the kind of type of security is, is totally. Un That's just on the edge of town enough where them kids can get in there and make all the noise they want, they think. And, I don't know. More, more lights and alarms will still do a lot, but you guys make your own call. Yeah, no, I, I think we've had a couple of good summers. I mean, just saying this is a problem we just noticed that, I mean, we really had this summer. Last summer wasn't as bad. Maybe a couple of years ago, we had some candy vandalism until we put the, the UFO lights around. So each step, we're learning, and then obviously this is going to need to be alarms and something. You mentioned lights on the concession stand. Is there lights on the bathroom doors once you keep getting kicked in? It's all There's lights all the way around that in the soffit. The, the door that got kicked in this time was the grandstand, and that's pretty dark over there. But Wooden doors, or do you have? No, they're they were they were expensive doors, Tim. They were steel, steel, and they were taken off to Watson's and got car paint put on them. I mean, they were they were nice doors. And the five of them we started with three years. I think we got one, maybe two that are <laughs> decent at this point. It, it, I don't know. All for a bag of chips and a pop. I, I don't I don't get it, but they're doing it. Still got a leftover 300 watt sodium up at the river. That's a night activated, dusk to dawn. That and, could, that could get and, and we could put, put it up. a night activated light right above those grandstands. I mean, put a big hot one over there so that they're out in a bright light for 50 yards coming to the building. That'll slow a lot of them down. <clears throat> That's the one that blinded you for a week and a half. Is that what you're dealing with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, just whatever. I mean, I'm, okay. I'm, well, I'll I'll get prices together. So so my thoughts on that are siding, bathroom fixtures, um, and flooring of some sort. Whether it's just ceramic tile, something in those bathrooms that I don't know. Because what's in there right now? Just cement. cement. <coughs> and we tried uh, even the uh, garage style chip paint that works pretty good in most garages and that, you know, slip, you know, slip and things like that. They even, I mean, they no just, mechanism. They just, just the fluctuation in temperature there is so hard on things to go from 120 in the summer inside to however cold in the winter. I, it's just, I don't know, it's hard. So, all right, well, I'll, I'll get together with Kurt or I'll just get him the prices we come up with and he can Right. It'll be you and will you give us the go ahead on when we can start work and then we'll uh, we'll get the guys lined up, at least tearing stuff out and getting started this fall so next spring's not such a big project when we're trying to get fields playable and stuff also. So I you gotta compliment or commend would be a better word, the uh, concession stands there. It was falling down. Let me see. 
dirt 17 years ago when I came. So it's been sitting there. That, that concession stand's never been a, a great concession stand. So, which is why they built the block one. I mean, they have the, the, the modern, more modern one for the Legion Field, which is a whole different ball game. But the other one was always just the that's the other, the other place. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you look at which one has the higher volume of people going through in the summer, it's definitely no doubt. the little kids, Absolutely. tenfold. So, yeah. All right, that sounds good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mike. All right. Number seven, discussion action on zoning board recommendation for the approval of dispatch tower for the fire hall. I'm not really going to say a whole lot. You've already, in your own mind, approved a uh, grant to the fire protection for this. Uh, my concern on the zoning side was that it was placed properly and that it met the requirements uh, for height and sturdiness. And the, what you have and what was sent to us uh, fulfilled that completely. So my recommendation, as well as the zoning board, is to uh, pass it. I didn't quite figure out where it was going to be placed there. It's going to be right at the southeast corner of the fire hall. Yeah, right. There's an empty spot yep. crying out there about eight by eight. Mm -hmm. I read it several times and I saw the height and the width in it. I just couldn't figure out what it was at. And does it have to have a light on it since it's nope. a certain height? No, nope. 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 it's not in the height nope. requirement. Good question though, because uh, yeah, you do uh, at certain levels need to indicate that that is not one. And certain times of year they land. I would make a motion to approve the zoning board recommendation for the dispatch tower located at the fire station. I'll second it. We have a motion and second for approval of the zoning board recommendation for the new dispatch tower at the Plant U Fire Hall. Julie? Aye. 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 Brian? Aye. Uh, number eight, discussion action, donation of property 304 West Park to the city. Jim Krause's project. Pass this down so you've got some pictures and descriptions to look at. Jim, you might want to grab a couple of these if you want to speak to the collective. This is what I had from this is the assessor's aerial photo and then the cadastral map off the assessor. But that just shows you what, what they've got there. Everybody knows the little yellow house. And it's Fills out that, that strip east of the Clown Museum. Correct. And I believe it's Jim's intention to talk about donating all or part of that, but that's what you need to settle here. The ordinance on purchasing property is loaded with appraise, notice, hearing, fuss, fuss, fuss. But if it's a donation, and as simple as this, and it's just going to be a deed, I don't think we're going to stretch our way to all that, but you've got to come to an agreement what you want to do here. As far as? Well, if you want to accept it, oh, okay. take well, it and more take than care of it. Okay. Gotcha. Well, that's kind of an introduction, Jim, if you want to take off with your thoughts. Well, it's just strictly a donation. Um, when it first burned down, or almost burned down, it just seemed to me like that was an opportunity for the Clown Doll Museum to go ahead and expand. And I talked to Kareem Janovic, and they thought, brought it to the Clown Doll Museum. I hope it would be an addition and not just a parking lot. That's our purpose of buying it was to donate it. At that time, I didn't realize the Clown Doll Museum was part of the city. I thought they had their own separate nonprofit organization. I didn't know. But anyway, nevertheless, um, I just approached Larry Babel, who owned it at that time. And then I just about backed out and I found out that he was talking to Cream. And but he had jacked the price up because they knew it was a Tom Doll museum. And anyway, talking to him, I got a plot for considerably less than what he was asking Kareem for for the Tom Doll Museum. And anyway, after a while we just we did get it. Um, the house needs to come down, of course, and I started that procedure 
Um, Mike knows how that all went. And, um, anyway, so it just didn't get done. So but I just like to wash my hands of it now and let you take care of the building and bring it down. I tried, um, you know, we just disconnected the gas and electricity and water and all that sort of stuff. And Huffman at that time was the sole business and I've not approached Ashaw until uh, just now. Um, <clears throat> I guess, like I said, we would just suggest, and I know it's up in Condell Museum probably, that to make a separate addition up there or connect it to the building or however they want to do it. And I think they have already met and they're interested in doing that. And so no strings attached. Dan and I just want to donate it to the city for progress and moving forward and hope it can be a good addition to the, to the community. Um, this is more of a suggestion just for the Clown Dog Museum people, but we would suggest the room, name, name it Lee and Janice Warnfield. I know Lee was very instrumental in starting the Clown Dog Museum, and that's, a, that's their decision. It's not, no strings attached. That it is, it is my wish that if you decide, and obviously this is what brought this to a, the agenda, it was Jim and Bruce on the donation side, because there will be some uh, reflection on uh, the donation going back for Jim price wise so he can use it on taxes. But once we have this donation, uh, we have that building behind Bruce's building, and I'm, we're going to go ahead and tear him down both at the same time. And we, Kurt and I have already been, we're just waiting to see if you want to go ahead and take this um, as a donation. And that's your call. I'm just asking if you've got, because I hear rumors that the new owner of Hopkins will not tear it down. And somebody told me this weekend that the name of Meta Grove that will, so, but I don't know how much you'll charge. Yeah, there's a couple, and that's a good one that you just mentioned. Yes, no, we were going to talk with Walter Ashoff, is of course the uh, one that took over. Uh, Hoffman's and then they, then they bring Wagner out of here. So and then somebody did mention the Metagro one too. So. Might want to check too, Mike, with the Bill and Ashaw. Okay. Yeah. What's the approximate cost of turning this down? Uh, um, Have we gotten any bids from anybody? Probably going up. <laughs> mm -hmm. It used to run three to 5000 on these little old houses, but it's hard to know now. I do know that I'm working with, um, behind the scenes, Pierce County Economic Development has put in a dilapidated house program. So part of their funds, I'm going to apply for $5,000 rebate to come back. Uh, that might cover a third of it. But that's all right. Both these houses need to go. Burned out shell and a uh, fire department uh, practice house. Both need to come down and uh, hopefully this fall. So Could we... Uh Contact all the demolition people and just put it out for bid. Yep. But I think that's a little too cheap. Yep. And I was, you know, the recommendation is Highland and Kurt and I just had already had this conversation, so you're you're uh, solidifying it. That's exactly yeah. what we want to do. I think that's a good idea. Well, from the standpoint of the council right now, there is no formality required of an ordinance or resolution, but you should at least get on the book with a motion. No, I was just asking the question. Except the donation of <coughs> the property, and I, I copied the deed. You, somebody who's going to make the motion or Courtney can just take it down. It's the E60 feet of lot 20, block 9, Kimball Letters Edition. If you get on the book here with a motion to accept the donation from the Krauses, uh, I would then prepare a deed for them to sign, and we'd probably give them back a formal receipt from the city for a donation value or something like that to make it reasonably worthwhile for a charitable deduction. Do what we can anyway. Uh, and we want to appraise it and the current condition of course doesn't say much but if we kicked up a receipt for the assessed value that would give them a decent tax benefit for the effort. Yeah. I guess the, um, only, the only thing I have a problem with though is the, I mean I, not the donation Jim but you said that it, it 
not to be used as a parking lot. I don't think the city's in the uh, building onto the Clown Doll Museum. I don't think yeah. to be. I understand that. That's going yeah. to the Clown Doll Museum. I mean, inside. at the present, yeah. after it's tore down, it probably would probably be a parking lot for some time before they ever decide <coughs> to do so. Well, we, we probably can't condition the, the documents, and I guess yeah. I wouldn't have a mind to if you just know what his yeah. wishes are, and yeah. I think the Clown Doll right. Museum will try to honor yeah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't want you to think that. No, I understand. Okay. I'm not going to guess that. So. Yeah. No. All right. I guess my thoughts are I'd rather wait till we get the bids in case they run across something that might cost us additional money before we accept the donated property. I'd rather see what, because if Brian had heard that, you know, Huffman's wouldn't do it and somebody else wouldn't do it, is there a reason why? Well, all I, I can was say, told I, yeah, I, I didn't mix that with the twins and the one from. That's who I was told about talking. There is no, to just to make it easy for you so we don't have to sit there and quit on it, there is no conditions. That's a perfect location to sit there and tear down. So, uh, and I don't think we'll have any problem. The only problem we have with excavators or excavation, and Jim knows this too, is that their time is a precious commodity and they, they go where the dollar is at the time, whether it's a farmer or not. So it's getting them on the schedule. So we've already taken that liberty to get out there and get them going. We want to get this going. Yeah, and Julie, the, you know, the fact of the matter is the city's going to have to do some of these every once in a while. Right. So we're just right. going to have to bite the bullet, whatever it takes. Right. I was just, just going off of Brian's have comment to get earlier. Yeah, the deal. Have to get as yeah. good a bid as you can. But in the deal, got to happen. Bruce, the deal with Huffman was they sold to Asheville. Mm -hmm. That's why they Yeah, they just quit. Yeah, they quit. Yeah. So. And there's a timing, timing you know. issue. I was taking that there was something here. else. Yeah, yeah. 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 talking to a couple of other people yeah. on other projects. Dan had told <laughs> folks that he had talked to that if he had commitments yeah. out to, he would try to get the buyers to honor him. Yeah. But that's kind of like, you know, don't that's make a purchase on it. You're going to do the best you can. Right. For your information, I already did the asbestos containment issue in class. Alexander was up there. I've got a written permit that everything is there was no asbestos in it. Awesome. And I do have that on file. I'm sorry. That was part That's of the asbestos. Was was part of the <laughs> yes, you got to have that. Yep. So I don't know anything else that was bothered up there. And I had talked with Dan as soon as we settled on this. And he said, yeah, he would try to do it. But I would be aware that he was selling the business. And he said he'd talk with that. But I like your idea. I like your idea about getting both same time in the same block. Yeah, we've been sort of Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's not go there. I'll make a motion that uh, uh, accept the donation from Jim and Jan Trout to the property at 304 West Park to the city. I'll second that. <clears throat> There's a motion and a second to accept the donation of property from Jim and Jan Krause at 304 West Park to the city. Julie? Aye. Tom? Aye. Mike? Aye. Brian? Aye. Courtney, you got that actual legal, so it can go in minutes. Is that all written down? Is that all done? I'll get it. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Yes. Sure. yes. Thank you very much. We'll get a deed ready for you in a couple days, and I'll give you a call. Okay. Do that. Okay. Discussion action ordinance 944 permitted hours for fireworks and city limits. <coughs> Amending ordinance 915. As we had talked, I brought a copy with blanks. You can take a look here and see if you can come to a consensus to fill in the blanks. <coughs> One thing I did was I added on and between to the ordinance language. It would created some confusion when it said between these two dates as to whether the day at either end oh, was yeah. included to right. eliminate that concern. I, it now says on and between this day and this day. So pick a day that suits you, but that takes away the ambiguity anyway. And then we had, there's a possibility of that center paragraph exception if you want to make it different if it's some odd holiday but that gets pretty complicated you know if the fourth falls on a, a weekend or the fourth falls on a Monday or whatever or some other holiday there's some of that language in the in the current stuff now we have if the fourth falls on a Friday
Friday, then they should be allowed to through the 6th rather than just through the 5th. Um, but you can say that or not. Just do as you please. It would be cleaner if you just pick some dates and say that's it. Would the state um, start selling? Well, ours right now opened up the whole thing to what the state allows for shooting them, and that's June 24 to July 5. And that's the, that's the standard window. But then what their sales, I'm sorry, they regulate the sales. Okay. The shooting them is up right. to the city. You right. can make it longer or shorter or whatever you want to do. <clears throat> bad weather day on the 4th like we did here this year, you got an extra day. And if, you know, I just think if there's even a little stuff left over just from the innocent standpoint, if kids want to burn it up the next day, let them burn it up the next day, you know, yeah. clean stuff up. But that's, that's your call. I guess that's my opinion. So then do we need to go down to the middle one and put on the 4th of July a fireworks day just well, or maybe that just goes away if you, if you don't want to have the complication. I mean, the theory was that if it fell on a Friday, you might extend it another day. That's what it was before. That somehow came into the conversation. You don't have to. But that would, that would cover if we made it between July 24th and July 5th. That would take care of that. Yeah, but it doesn't say <clears throat> till how late at night, each night, each one of those nights. Right. And you Sorry, I don't want them to just be lighting off till midnight every night. So no, I, I agree. Yeah, you talked about shortening up the time on yeah. certain dates, and you can certainly do that. But I'm gonna, I couldn't bring you a draft that says everything possible. You sure. tell me what you want. If we can define it well enough, you can pass it tonight, or we can have a clean one next month. It's not like we're close to the event right now. I mean. I think on the fourth you almost have to go to midnight. Twelve, yeah, midnight. Midnight, mm -hmm. yeah. And then any other day after that. I can't see that they need to go to So on the fourth, eight AM to midnight? And that's how what I would say. That's yeah. what I would say. For the fourth. So we could probably so the eliminate the however Sentence. Yeah, the extension of the date. Yeah, we could eliminate that. that. Could go away on the fourth, eight o'clock to twelve. All other days, what? Ten to ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ten. Seriously. Yeah. 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 Ten in the morning till ten at night. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. People I'm, have to work. So. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's dark outside. That's that's more than late enough on any other night. Right. And ten to ten on. I know. It gets old. It gets old really fast. And the dogs bark in the back. Right. Start on the 24th. Yep. I was a kid once, too. Eric enjoyed the fun. Yeah. 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 I was a kid once, too. Eric enjoyed the fireworks, and now I don't. That was Jerry. I agree. Ten with ten. You really don't matter what time you have. You're out of complaining. Oh, yeah. I agree. You will. There'll be somebody that will go at 12-10. Somebody will shoot. Now, some of them will play at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So, a lot of people work all night long, sleep all day, some mm -hmm. work all day, try to sleep at nine o'clock at night. So. Speaking of that, how's the whistle coming? <laughs> oh, that's a separate question. And it's not, oh, that's that's not on the agenda. Sore subject. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have that fixed for months. Like we want to do again. like one to ten. <coughs> so those who do work, I, I never take that into consideration. Those that I do don't have a lot of fireworks at ten o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I would say like Back it off to one, 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 one or one two. One p.m. to ten p.m. Excuse me. That's the one we can go at noon. Ten. Noon's probably late enough. Okay. Twelve o'clock noon. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Or so, not just. Are, there, are, we, talking size, are yeah. we talking size limit here? Oh yeah. Well, that's, that's, up, that's up. That's up in the yeah. top. Yeah, that's oh, but I mean, they can shoot off the low stuff. They got a lot of time, right? Are you talking? Despite the fact that the state law stuff still talks about these seven-eighths-inch firecrackers and stuff, as you well know, 
they're not, they don't even There's sell. bigger stuff than that showing up even, these days. Yeah, they don't even sell 7-8s anymore, uh, I think. Cannon shells that would go through the side of the tank and blow the <laughs> lid off. <laughs> okay, so June 24 to July 5, on the 4th, 8 a.m. to 12 midnight, all other days, 12 noon to 10 p.m. Yes, sir. Clear enough? That's awesome. Everybody good with that? I'm just what I'm just saying. I'm good with the rest. Did you have a complaint? You're talking about these little chickens that the kids do and the little snakes, and you're talking absolutely nothing. It'd be done till noon, right? A lot of these kids don't even get out of bed till noon. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> 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 do when fireworks talking. <laughs> 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 My kids quarrel just say you wait till noon. I mean, yeah. we used to be up at 7:30 doing cat pens. Bruce, since we we're going to the fifth, say we got rained out on the fourth, do we need to clarify that at twelve o'clock on the fifth too? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Up to you. Say whatever you want. I mean we've had, you know, the possibility of rained out on the fourth here this year. That happened to a lot of people. We can look at the forecast to see if it's gonna be rain much <laughs> The chances of rain. I mean, the, the business of somebody still going back to work and still trying to get to sleep and stuff doesn't change just because it rained up the fourth. Right. But yeah. whatever you guys want to write down. I'm good with 12 to 10 on the rest of the day. They had their chance. They can either go out in the rain or they can. Well, yeah, most people have to go to work on the fifth anyway. I mean, everybody gets the fourth <clears throat> for most people. Gets guess, the fourth off, but people got to get up. I guess for me, we've got a whole week ahead of that until I fire was off. Exactly. Yeah. It's not like I'm only getting the fourth to get me. Yeah. Well, if the forecast is bad for the fourth, set them off on the third. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Agreed. I'm good with that. This is good. Anybody else in the unit? Yeah. I just, well, if you're clear enough with that, little. we can do the reprint and it can be clean and just pass it as an ordinance tonight. But if you want to clean with printed for next month, we can do it that way too. Whatever you want to do. Just get it done tonight. I'll make a motion to amend ordinance 944. 915. 915, thank you. That between, um, to have it between June 24th and July 5th of every year, and on the 4th of July, between the hours of 8 a.m. and midnight, or 12 o'clock a.m. <coughs> And on other, all other days, um, fireworks shall be limited to 12 p.m. till 10 p.m. Second. Second. Okay, all right. We have a motion and a second for to amend Ordinance 915. Pass Ordinance 915. The code section is something else, but it's her, Courtney's number is 915. Right? That's the old one. That's the old one. 944 is the new one. 915. Well, you're just passing 944. Okay, so that's right. No, you just, we just, you just made a motion to amend 915. Well, it was the same thing. It's the same thing. Okay. It's a new one. Yeah. Yeah. It's the Okay. Strictly speaking, we're passing your new ordinance. With the following amendments, the um, fireworks from June 24th to July 5th, um, times 8 a.m. to midnight on the 4th, all other days, 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Julie? Aye. Don? Aye. Mike? Aye. Brian? Nay. I just wanted to do that once PS to look at or at the eleven PM, but then I will make the motion to waive the second and third readings and approve as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second to waive the second and third readings and approve as presented. <coughs> Aye. Tom? Aye. Mike? Aye. Aye. Action on the utility service protection plan for 
for water and sewer. I'm going to have Kurt. Have this. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to have Kurt address this a little bit. I do not want this to be, but for any practical purposes, a drawn-out discussion tonight. This is to prompt something that we've talked about before, with the um, basically the liability and the responsibility of the homeowner versus uh, the city, and sometimes the um, extended use or abuse of the city in this regard. So, if, Kurt, you want to just address kind of what the concerns were because you're really getting to the technical part of the service line to the main. Yeah, right now it's got up to, you know, where we go to the curb stop and I'd like to change that. So, it'd be like the sewer, so they'd be liable to clear up to the main. And we did the uh, Kelly Mowers out there the other day. We ended up putting a new line in clear to the main, and they put a new line in to the house because it's all galvanized and junk. But now we got to replace the sidewalk and all that stuff. I mean, this is, it's kind of a headache for us. But, I mean, the sewer, they, I mean, the homeowner goes and does it all. They take, take care of it all. Right now, the city pays, or the city charges the homeowner for all the supplies plus 15, 15 percent. The only thing they gain out of here is the labor trade. So, I mean, it's. So, why would and we replace the sidewalk at our expense? Because the isn't. curb stop is yeah, right in the sidewalk. But I would say the curb stop. One of the discussions that was also had that I, I did some research on and cannot find, even from an insurance side, any problems with that, but we could look at a almost like a cap plan like gas does and charge the homeowners uh, X amount per month to basically be under that and the city would continue to service regardless of and that gray area would kind of go away and the city would just do it but you're paying on a cap plan say 20 bucks a month or you can even do it on the rate if you're getting charged 12 bucks a month on the water and you get charged 20 bucks but you're covered under that so that if you have any issues <coughs> that are around not only the um, curb stop in that gray area, you know, the city will just simply take care of it. And if it has to be the service, you know, that, that's different. That goes to the plumber and whatever the case may be. But um, just food for thought, really don't need anything done, but I'd like to bring it back after you guys having this and just kind of going over it and getting more clarity. So that's what we brought it tonight for. Does that make sense of what you're talking about, the cap? I mean, we're talking mainly around the, the curb stop area. Pardon me? The, the cap kind of plan where we're just going to go ahead and do it, but it'll be for those and then those that aren't on a cap plan, yeah, no, like anybody uh, else, then it becomes that, uh, no, because we get into this argumentative, argumentative side of things with someone saying, well, that's not my responsibility. And unfortunately, we have plumbers out there in the area, not necessarily Plainview, but area, that will say, oh, that's not your responsibility, that's the city's. And then Kurt has to say, no, that's your responsibility. And then you get this kind of- I think for what it's worth, the business of the city will do the tap and bring it to the curb stop, was to keep Joe Plummer from God knows where from messing with the city of Maine. Agreed. I, I don't yeah, disagree. We have to do an inspection on that. Yeah, well, but if they screw it up, what are you going to do? I mean, uh, if the city people do the tap, <coughs> we could screw it up too. Sure, but then we know it's the city's well, contractors. Don't mm -hmm. have that equipment, though, would they? General contractors. I don't know. General contractors have that equipment to go into the mains, tap in. I yeah, Hoffman Plumbing on North Fork. Uh, Tangerman. Tangerman, he does, and uh, Morrill. Moral, right? 
So what, what are the, so if you have the local guy do it, where's your curb stop then? Well, I think this is where we were bringing in the cap. Because remember, I had that argument the last time we did this. If I'm paying for it, I'm putting my shut up in the house, how are you going to shut my water off? We did have that argument the last time. Well, the reason the city the owns the curb stop is the city can control the curb stop. Well, if I'm paying Shut from, off the water. I'm paying from he's the main, saying, yeah, he's paying from the main, main including the curb stop. That's all my expense. I'm putting that curb stop in my house. I'm, if I'm paying for it, Bruce, it's going in my house to shut up. We wouldn't call which it, ain't practical. We wouldn't call it a curb stop there, but okay. No. But, <laughs> <laughs> but see what I'm saying? Well, so that's the city. why it is how, how it is. How it is. How it is. How, so the city can control it. Yeah, how are they going to shut me off if I don't pay my bill? <coughs> All, well, okay, before this is what yeah, I this is, this is getting out what of I, what I no, really I want, you to, want you to do is just sit there and look at it. And there is a concern. Raleigh had the concern. Hertz has the concern because things are changing. Yes, that is the way it's supposed to be. But people are becoming uh, a little more sensitive on this, uh, what's their liability and what's not their liability. And we're just trying to ease that somewhat, somehow, mm -hmm. either with a cap plan to say we're going to take care of it, all of it, you know, there. But like, <clears throat> that's it. Just think about it. Like I said, we'll, we'll bring it up in that. But if you got, like I said, that was a good argument to come back with. But yeah. I just don't know if you put another twenty dollars on somebody's bill. They had a hard time with an extra two dollars for trash tote. You know. Still I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm still. We're going to get a, a lot of feedback on that. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, Julie, I know this is a side note, and I'll bring it up there. That's unfortunate because basically, Plainview became the laughing stock of the entire area on this $3 increase mm -hmm. on totes because it was not. People don't understand how we ever survived without it. I mean, they think that the 15 is still too cheap if you've been anywhere else. and, and you, it's, it was, but I'm, it's beside right. the subject. I mean, let's, right. but, but I understand but what you're saying. But those are on a fixed income. Yeah. You know, if, you know, you do do the cap, it'll mm -hmm. cost them some. Kurt, what did they run into their house? Is plastic or? Copper. They run copper in. Well, what we do, do with them from the curb stop, they can do whatever they want. <clears throat> So your tap off the main is copper to the curb stop. Yeah. So it's from the main to the curb stop and everything in copper. <clears throat> so right now you, you can guys still have try to locate copper. You can't locate plastic unless you have trace, in which now we've got the tracer wire. In which we did have that put in. Remember, Mike? Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. We got the <clears throat> tracer wire in here. That's why I was wondering if they put in plastic. They supposedly supposed to put the tracer wire. In. Yeah, you got to. Go ahead, Julie. Did you have a thing with? I'm reading it right now. Oh, you're okay. That's yeah. You're answering then your own question right there. I'm reading my own answer. <laughs> well, if you're going to talk about this this morning, you all need to read that 3105. There's a lot of stuff in there that has to be changed if you're going to change that plan about responsibility and inspections and permits and this and that. And if you pollute the city water system, Tabling this for next meeting or something until we can all. Yeah, you don't yeah. even have to table, just, just move on. Move on. on. Okay. Uh, number 11, discussion on budget, fiscal year 18 19. 
All right, I'll just uh, take care of um, everything here and we can kind of just wrap it up. Uh, I think first thing we need to know in discussion on budget fiscal year 2018-19, I need from you probably about three workshops. I can probably do it in two, but one of them is going to be longer. You know, so, but I'm looking at the workshops on the 21st, 28th, and the 4th. You might have, uh, obviously, the next one, uh, what? That was going to be the short one. Oh, yeah, not the hearing part. No, just on a workshop. I got you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, but so I, I do want the 21st, yes. 21st, 28th, and what else? 21st, 28th, and the 4th. The next? That's the next three Tuesdays. And then the Tuesday after that's a reason. Right. Yeah, this is, unfortunately, this is why you get the big bucks. Uh, <laughs> is uh, August rolls around, this is budget time. So um, if, if I can maybe do it in two, uh, the 21st will be a, uh, basically a, a, an awareness to, to get you into the 2018-19 budget, if that works. 21st is probably one of my more important ones. And we probably don't need two hours, I just need a good hour. Oh yeah, we just we're looking at Tuesdays. If you want to change it to a, a, another day, twenty first and twenty eighth are, are good for me. Yeah, for me as well. There's a chance, to be honest. I what time though? That. That's up to you. Two thirty in the afternoon. <laughs> that does not work for me. Can you? Can you be? Can you be back here by five thirty? Not that day. I have meetings that day. I won't be done till. Yeah. Six would work. Six would work, and I'd have you out by seven. I believe fire department have a uh, training. That's your end of the month. Just one hour on the 21st? Just one hour on the 21st. You're going to get your packet material. You're going to get some of the things. But, and that's the next part. Let me just get into that real quick so we can move along the meeting. Uh, two things have to happen on the budget for this year. Uh, something new for me, although it seems to be pretty straightforward. I need to, on the 28th, if that's permissible, and I'm planning on the 28th as well, to do a uh, public hearing to amend the 2017-18 budget, bringing it back in line. We had a, a unused restricted authority or surplus of right around $900,000. So that is a little bit contrary to what you heard from your auditor, and I know that you're going to, but I'm working with the same auditor, but you have uh, uh, that amount. We're going to transfer for the first year, we're going to transfer in a, in a nutshell, 500 or half a million dollars back into the general to go ahead and offset those book losses. That has to be a public hearing and amendment to the budget, and I'm looking to do that on the 28th, and I believe there's also a resolution that I'll give to Bruce from the auditors that needs to be passed. What's that? The transfer to the general. Yes, I, I'm sorry if I said that back. But general to the utilities, because that's where it stood. And then the utilities, basically, you're going to see on the amendment uh, money going back and forth. But it will clear up the 2017-18 budget to at least satisfy the auditors. The money was always there. It's just in the wrong spot, and that was caused by a previous auditor saying that's where you could keep it, and he was probably wrong. And I'm, I'm agreeing with our auditor that we have to use. That's one step of it. The main step that you'll be looking at is the 2018-19 budget, which will, I'll be looking at um, several of the issues, not only including health insurance, salary, labor costs, as well as the electrical utilities. Which leads me to, if we're okay on that, do uh, you want to set August 28th right now for the uh, same time or earlier? Um, six again. Okay, I 
mean, it's, it's yeah, my goal on each one of those was to keep the time limit so that you don't get yourself. Is two hours going to be enough though before you have to go? Oh, I, it'll be plenty. Because i got to space it out. There are things that will be coming in. This first one, I may not even have the uh, uh, valuation out yet. I, I probably won't get that until the 20th. So we're right on top of it. So there's things that are coming to me from the county that I have to include into the budget. And I won't know that till the August 20th. So the 21st might be just the overview and get going. 28th, we'll have the hearing for the amendment to the budget, plus the workshop for the 1819 budget. So, and then September 4th may not have to happen. So if you're worried about a holiday or changing a date, that would be the one we could wait and maybe look at the 28th and see where everybody's at and how much we get accomplished. So. Uh, the next part of the, of the uh, city report is I wanted to let you be aware of where we're at with the uh, electrical utilities. We had a committee meeting. Tom was there. Uh, Mike, I'm sorry I bothered you at the uh, funeral. That's right. That's, uh, but uh, we had a very good meeting. Bruce has been through uh, the parts of the contract that needed work that he talked to you about last month. And we've also been through a couple of other parts when it comes to the financial side so we can understand where we need to be as well. That'll go into the 1819 budget. Um, and I'll bring that back on the next one. I did have a, the conversation today with um, Kyle, who is with our auditor, and the amount needed to sustain is roughly, it's between 200 and 250. And we're working it out. I just had this conversation at 3 o'clock this afternoon with Kyle. Um, what that means, if you look at 14.5% on a lease payment from the utility, that's right at 200000 uh, Comfort level will be somewhere in there. I need to reduce some costs on the electrical. But what came out of that is uh, the way the rates and the way the money, it will flow and it will work. And we will do everything that we've been actually working at for 12 months on this electrical utility. So with that in mind, I'm at a spot, and I told the group that I'm comfortable with proceeding forward to recommend to go that direction. With that being said, I'm also very aware, very aware, that we need to begin the public education process. So the first step was, is tonight, to let you know this committee has been meeting and we've been working on it as well as the city attorney in that to look at the language in the contract and to do the things that needed to be done right step by step. We're there. So I'd like to put that out and have a town hall and uh, do it all the time, not all the time, but consistently through now until September 11th and bring it at the September 11th meeting for a recommendation. So even starting this week, you know, so and actually started tonight. So I don't know if you have any questions you want to ask. If Tom in particular was there. Mike, you've been there. Bruce, if there's anything you want to add, but I want to make sure that there's a lot of clarity in this picture. I know it will work financially for the city because we were actually putting a lot of surplus monies from the electrical utilities. We might have been making 1.5, but we were also spending about 1.3. So that's where that $200,000 gap and we've had to lower our general expenses, put more expenses onto the other utilities and they can sustain it right now. But this will turn, not only working with the utilities, but on the budget will turn our general where the auditors want it and start building up that unrestricted cash reserve. So my comfort level is there and, and you know, like I said, short of going to the meetings of the budget and showing you in, in writing where we need to be, this is my informative time just to let you know where I stand. So. And we should get for everybody this final draft of the agreements out now. I mean, when I brought up that business of <clears throat> that one indemnity clause that they had in their contract proposal a month ago, Mike brought it up to, what's his name? Is there? Keith. Keith. And even before I wrote the formal letter in which I said, goes wrong 
wrong and the NGPPD is responsible for anything, the city will reimburse them, no matter what they do virtually. And we said that had to go away, and it did go away. And they made some other tweaks and nudges, and you need to read through the thing too so you're fully aware of what's there, but, but it's workable. I mean, the, the, the real question, policy question for you guys then is the, the sensibility of doing this and having them do the maintenance. They've been here, they're seeming to work with everybody. You'll have to talk with everybody and be sure you're in agreement with that. And then they've, they've got some vague plans that they're willing to talk about, but not right now, about what they're going to do in the next year or so. Uh, real early in the game, I think, you'll hear that they intend to go with all automatic meters so that they'll have the shutoff capability and they can read everything remotely. They're going to come in and do a tremendous tree trimming and basic maintenance plan. They don't want to you know, put all that in hard, fast, deadline writing and put it in the paper, but they're going to be responsible for the system. They're going to get everything up to snuff in the next couple of years really go after it, which is, of course saves the city a huge expense if you undertook to do that on your own. So all in all, I think it's a pretty good package, but you do need to make sure it will sell. And they've got a fancy rate study and they're going to rejuggle all the rates and uh, they can talk about that. They're actually planning, I think, to cut basic residential homeowners a little break at least for a while reevaluate the commercial and I mean it, it'll tweak the rates and some will do better and some will do worse but but they're trying to make their rates a little more uniform throughout all of their system and they don't want a lot of strange cut rate stuff for electric heat here and not there and mm -hmm. so on apparently by their definition the cut rate for electric heat stuff has pretty much gone away uh, that's not area it's not even feasible yeah it just doesn't work for them and they think it's nuts and they think that should right. go away <clears throat> in fact i asked them because i've got a, a double meter over here on this little on my storage building back there and i think they're going to get rid of the double meters and just put single meters on and just bridge stuff together and say now you have electricity you know, instead of heat meter and other meter so when did they think they'd have the rates then well, they have a rate study done, and they, we can have that available for the council to see and so on. Yeah, right it's, it's quite complex, and to, you know, for any one property owner, you've got to work through it letter and verse, and it's not exactly easy. I mean, it's all computerized at this point. This is the, the current version, and it's for the, the actual version, which I've been through every single page, and I'm not trying to um, this is what I get paid to do, is 459 pages. You're more than welcome to go through each of the one of the 459 pages. But as far as the rates go, uh, Bruce is right. It is very complex. Um, it is taking into account one of the issues, and like I said, 12 months I've been working on this, one of the issues I had a concern with was the commercial buildings that we have. So I had them put a special rate in for the commercial buildings that we have that we currently, because if we don't, if we didn't change that or don't change that, we would have been stuck with uh, probably an extra 65,000 that was unnecessary on top of it. They were able to cut that in half because we're still going to have to pay for that. By uh, we, you mean uh, just so they understand the city buying the electricity? The city has to purchase the city paying the electricity, electricity right. bill for the yeah. buildings that right. they own. Yeah. Which, so That's we right. have a new class, we have yeah. a new classification that actually went in, and it's called municipal buildings. You know, and that's uh, and that will help. Um, it's still a cost, but you know, I've allocated that cost into the the budget because you'll still have an electric plant budget. How much is in that electric plant budget is uh, you know still has yet to be determined because that's what where that two hundred and fifty thousand, you know, give or take a little bit, is being considered, and that would be the lease payment. But like I said, you take away um, just tremendous amount of cost too. I mean, just right. that's that's the one thing 
if we have a big year, which is one thing that nobody ever talks about, but you know, it's so cyclical based on weather, um, our lease payment, if it's based on 1.2 million, is gonna be less than if we had $1.5 million a year, which we are on pace right now to have a, say, $1.45 million a year. So what would that be in actual numbers on the lease? It would be anywhere between 200 and 250,000. You know, and that's what we're, we're kind of looking at. So auditor leans toward more toward the heavy. I'm trying to, I told him I'm trying to lean toward the realistic. I don't want a lot of the rates to change. I mean, if you look at residential, um, residential goes down. 9%. So if you're a homeowner and you live in Plainview and you want you know, to something to go forward, anyone that comes out and complains and says my rates will go up, guess what? You're probably not arguing a good argument because your rates will probably go down. Well, and I think that's what the public needs to hear is, okay, based off of what I'm paying right now, if we enter into this agreement, how are my rates going to change? That they need to see the realistic and we may um, be able to what work their rates up, are going to be. Yeah, may be able to work up three or four examples. You know, you're really going to be hard pressed if you try and answer that specific question. Right to everybody. Right, but Every just person. a generalization is it going to go up five percent? Is it going to go down? We could ask them to, and they've got the stuff. I mean, it's and it's part of the rate design, and like I said, and of course you're going to hear the argument that that's all theoretical. Well, all of this is. That's why we're going to revisit it on a regular basis and they built that in and Bruce helped with that contract language as well is that they built it in where we'd have a two month turnaround on a um, um, the amount of the lease. So if we see it's not matching and you know the, the homeowners are just getting this bargain deal and they're, they're only paying, I guarantee you they'll still complain about electric no matter what. But I'd say if they're getting a, a deal on this, a bargain, and uh, we see that we're not making enough money, we can turn that around and up the rates which we're, we might need to. We don't know what it's going to look like. The lease, the lease fee the city will have, and I'll explain all this if we want to go through that contract, but the lease fee the city has the right to change it in 60 days notice. Really all they do is they just punch it into their bill. Lease fee on top of the bill is going to show up to the consumer. <laughs> but the lease fee that comes to the city uh, is changeable. So if we do miss and the budget is high, lower, and different, rates themselves, they reserve the right, once you're into this, to set these rates as what they got to have. You know, it's the same thing they do with people out in the country. Mm -hmm. This is what it's going to take. But they don't even do the rate study themselves. They hire a national outfit that's in the business, and he does all that stuff. He gives it to them. They haven't even really tweaked it much, I don't think. No, they they take is. what he gives them. I mean, you, I tell you, the one that probably worked the most on there, I'll give credit where credit's due, was Melissa. I mean, as the utility clerk, she had to kind of constantly give different rates from different individuals to see how it would fit in. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's a 459 page, uh, well with graphs and everything, and um, it works. I so, think we need to have some scenarios for people. Yeah, that's right. You gotta have some real examples mm -hmm. of what they're gonna be. Because otherwise, it's all just smoke and Right, but you also need to disclose to them, you know, what at 60 days they could be changing based off of. I mean, I think that needs to be disclosed. Well, now uh, hold on, make sure you, Mike. Mike went on two sides of the story there rather right. rapidly. The 60 day thing is the city's ability to change the lease payment rate. Oh, okay. Not I'm sorry. Not the I thought you were saying okay. Okay. No. okay. The other rates, once they're Which in place, that's in CPPD. Okay. Okay. And I believe, can, thank you for clarifying that because I was under that impression. We could ask them to reallocate and they'll talk to us, but it's not going to happen real easy. And I believe they looked at this and they're going to look at it uh, several times, but they tried to lock this in with these rates and try to do things as they do things, uh, like almost two years, and then they'll reevaluate where they're at. So there's not a whole lot of change that's going to happen um, to the rates. And, and, one thing that's got to be very clear, and Bruce made it uh, clear, was that there are going to be losers in this game, if you want to call it. And I don't know who they are, but if you're a commercial and you're trying to run all electric in your building, you might not be in very good shape. Well, that remains to be seen, but we can ask that question. 
Um, Susan, do you have something? Yeah, I mean, I agree with Julie about people are going to be concerned about their rates. But as far as services go, a lot of people are used to paying for their electric bill in town. Does that still occur? Or does all billing and payment then go through NCPPD? All billing goes through NCPPD. They'll do the billing. So there's no more, you can't go to the city office to pay your bill? No, pay trash, water, and sewer at the city. Yeah. So we'll still have our monthly bills, so just we won't include no electric. electric. And the Louisiana employee then? Uh, so forth, possibly. I reserve the right <laughs> to wait till budget. Yeah. I just, that was just my curiosity. I don't live in town, so it doesn't affect me. Well, that's all. But that's great, because people yeah, are going to want to know if they can still and, drop off. And yeah. The other thing about timing, I think the current plan is Second quarter of 19, right? They didn't want to, even if this all is done in the next month or two, mm -hmm. they won't try to implement it until it's a two and a half month the second transition. quarter of, of 19. They've got a huge adjustment of some kind happening right around the first year. They're only willing to do it on a quarter. And they don't want to do it in January because they got a bunch of other stuff going. So they would defer plain use changes to first of March or something like that. But we could have already have been approved, right? Yeah. Right. And, and well, would, they won't even start the process yeah. until this gets passed and you sign the agreement. If yeah. that all happens, then they'll start working on it, but they won't implement it, and I think, until the first of March. We'll have to talk to them about that. And then Alex says that. I, I actually thought, Tom, I thought it was the first of January was the time they would have to do it, but you could be right, Bruce. I mean, it could be the first of March. Well, I don't well, think they wanted to mess around with the first <coughs> rounds. I feel they like wanted to mess around after the first, did they? Yeah, they wanted it had to be either, they're just not on the first. Well, when I brought it up, their bookkeeper guy that was sitting over here, you know, he was he about had a stroke because they got something going in December that's huge and they couldn't possibly do it at the first of the year <laughs> or something. Trump's coming. But you can ask him. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, Mike's got to get the plan and the meetings and whatever you guys want to do to get the information and sell this so it's going to be sold. Bruce, the only other question I have for you is, if I remember right, didn't they want like a, and I'm sure you discussed it, didn't they want like a five-year advance notice of an out? They did. Uh, they they pushed on that quite a bit. And what the thing comes to right now is 10-year fixed, and then a five-year notice of out. So it's, it's still 15. I mean, you just got to bite that bullet, yeah. and that's what it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, that's they, I, I essentially told them, well, that's the same as nothing, then, because a five-year out is just a 15-year contract. And it is. Yeah, they did. That but did. they've got, you know, as just like in the old days of signing up with all these different power suppliers and signing up with me, all of those people deal on a 15, 20, 30 year window. They sell bonds, they deal with huge financing issues. They gotta have some certainty out here. So if we're gonna work with them, I think it has to be on that basis. So Mike, then, since I don't say Manny, then I know Mike and April, uh, Mike Mean and Miller, will they take over that part of it? Or are we yeah. still up? Still obligated to our contract. Yeah, we in they'll fact do, they'll do with us and we. Yeah, well, the bottom line, and Bruce will tell you this because there's legal language there. I think the easiest way to explain this is that when this is all done, you will work with NCPPD first, sign the pro agreement to work with them. That's what will be presented on the 11th of September after we have all these town hall and all this kind of meetings to go over. If you choose to go that way, the next step is to sign in and give your contracts with Mean Power and WAPA, who have already agreed with this type of arrangement. They got some strange language in their things that uh, Bruce was looking at, but the WAPA and Mean contracts are, are ready to go. So they're waiting for this to happen, and then there will be no issue after that. Essentially, they become the agent for the city to deal with WAPA and deal with Mean, and they'll do all that stirring. And just they don't say they're buying the power; they say Plainview's buying the power, but we're the agent to handle it. And because of our contract with Mean, is Plainview's buying the power with Mean, and 
and they don't want to change it to say they're buying power from me, and I don't think they want to do that either. But but they'll handle all of that financial jumbling. One of the nice things that was structured into the Pearl Agreement that was added, and I, I saw it, and so did Bruce, is that the fact that their reporting mechanisms, they will report based upon our old knowledge, that we will know each month, obviously, where that gross revenue and expenditures and is going out. And I think it's on an every 30-day basis. So, But their reporting was pretty pretty straightforward, and it was a, a nice addition that they put in. So instead of waiting quarterly or half a year and then or yearly to see what how we really panned out. And I guess one other thing that was maybe important, they they varied on this, but I think they're back to the position that pretty certainly plain view city limits will get a board seat. So they'll have to expand their board and reallocate their voting mechanisms inside NCPPD. But Plainview will carry a big enough percentage of the operation that it almost guarantees a district and a board seat. It might not be exactly contiguous to the city limits, but pretty close. So you at least have a pretty strong voice in talking to them about the overall rates and stuff like that. It, they'll, they'll have that presentation. I mean, you all need to hear it. I see the agreement. There was a slight uh, argument discrepancy on uh, as far as. Uh, there was a point when they didn't know the power review board was even going to allow a seat. Not a big deal, but this is that roller coaster going back and forth because they said, well, you'll get a seat. No, you won't get a seat. Yes, you'll get a seat. Now it is uh, determined that regardless of what happens, a seat's guaranteed and there's even a chance for a partial or a second seat. But, you know, that's, I mean, that's, that is way out of our um, hands. I mean, that, that's belonging to the power review board and the jurisdiction and um, the section in that so that we're guaranteed with our population to have a seat. Are you going to try and pick dates? I guess that's your move ahead plan here. Or is there a plan? You're doing all your budget meetings right at the same time. Yeah, I don't think squeeze in some public meeting. Yeah, the public hearing, um, the, not public hearing, the public meetings. Um, just be aware that obviously if you're there and when you would like, you want to attend with anyone, you probably should but not as a full council. I mean, I'm probably not gonna make it that kind of, unless you tell me to, but you could over, you could overwhelm yourself here in the next two, three weeks. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have a town hall meeting here and those that are invited, and probably we talked about putting out Facebook Live, let the social media have it, and you know, and, and go for it. It wouldn't be a bad thing to notice each one at a city council meeting, I mean, the attendance optional or something yeah. like that, but if you all show up and start talking if you haven't noticed the city council meeting. Uh, you're right about that. I guess it wasn't going that direction. That's a big enough deal. They might all show up sometime. Sure. Or just look through the door. Yep, there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not my night. Yeah. I'm talking about having a public hearing strictly for that issue, the PPP mm -hmm. the agreement. Just, and, and more of on the town hall format uh, rather than a... Informational. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't exactly, it won't be a public hearing, but you got, I know what you mean. And they'll have representatives from North yeah, Central. They agreed I requested comment. that, and they agreed that they they would come and they would be able to explain it. The best information they would have. Yeah. When you say that the the rates are going to go down, you're not talking about their overall bill. You're just talking about their base electric rate, aren't you? Yep. So just you're talking about for residential. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just. Well, and they, I would say be careful about that because they're going to expect. Well, they'll, they'll, speak, they'll speak to that, but they, yeah. their general pitch right now is residential rates are likely to be down in the first run, but, annually, but I don't, that doesn't they're going to they're they're gonna gonna adjust stuff every year and keep fiddling, and yeah, they'll, they'll be a little cautious. I'll just make sure that. when you say that to put it into context that your base electrical rates are going to be lower, but your overall bill is probably they're all going to be adjusted. The franchise fee. Well, that basically, is, unless yeah. I misunderstood it, Mike, the residential rates go down. By nine percent, and we're going to charge fourteen or fifteen percent. They're going to have about a five percent increase on their bill. Yeah, oh, and yeah. That, that'd be the best way to phrase it. Yeah, I would uh, say. Uh, based on that, amount, I wouldn't just say, "Hey, your 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 rate's going to go down" because they're going to expect a cheaper bill. Can yeah. you say that? So I mean, yeah, basically, the residential, if you put it that way, unless I'm wrong, in saying that would be a five percent increase well, over the 
you're getting five percent. Some of them are going to be fourteen and a half. It, it, it's that's hard. Why, to that's why we need some examples. Yeah. Too, because we haven't been able to get hard numbers. For example, because we haven't settled on the fourteen percent. Right. And they've never run that through their system. We got to get that done. Yeah. I think it's hard to say because you know you, you can't look at it like I mean I mean I think it's, there's it is so complex that even the system when it sits there and measures um, you got to allocate winter rates to summer rates you got to allocate uh, 1000 kilowatts to 2000 kilowatts 2000 to 5000 kilowatts 5000 and higher so if you're a little old lady or man be correct and you use less than 1000 kilowatts and it's in the summer and it's based upon the 9% decrease even with the lease payment you might see a reduction but if you are a commercial, all electric, and you are looking at something based upon 10,000 kilowatts or more and getting a break on the plain view rates, you might now see you're not getting quite that break and it may have ended up being like a 20%. That's why we need some hard examples, right? Mm -hmm. Well calculated out. Right. Not just you may and you may and you may and you may. Right. People won't sit for that very well. Like a family of five, you know, a, a single, it, it will be difficult. Yes, I can do it. I will well, pull, out. I'll pull it out a home or two. Well, either that or you just ask them. I think they can run it. You know, what if we got this homeowner? What's the bill going to be? What if we got this property? What's the bill going to be? That's basically what you put it to them that way. Basically, when like you have to base it off of, okay, I would use 300 kilowatts. That's the example I would use would be by kilowatts. Yeah. You can't say what a family is going to use. No, month you to month, you'd have to say, it. here's an average, uh, Courtney uses 350 kilowatts. Right, I was just going to say, just pick a couple different scenarios from Ki people's Kilowatt. Yeah. yeah. Which, I, I, I've been saying, agreement, I'm not arguing, yeah. but I'm saying that remember that even with 300 kilowatts, there's nine different classifications yeah. that you use yeah. 300 yeah. kilowatts. Mm -hmm. You know, and probably another 20 in classifications within that. You're still going to have to define right. the property. Yeah. Yeah. So, if I'm hearing this right, it's it's basically a town hall meeting that will be led by the power company representatives, correct? No, I, I would argue that. Okay. No. So it's this not. is our meeting. Okay. The power, the power company people will come to answer some questions, but this okay. is still the city of Plainview's meeting. Okay, does that have like PowerPoint presentations? What? The 11th? The 11th will be the actual oh, bringing it back our to meeting. our meeting okay. here, but I'm going to need to have, I, I would say at least twice between now and the 11th, including starting this discussion tonight. Are, you, are they going to use like PowerPoint technology to explain all this? I know a lot of information being thrown at people. Yeah, but I, I, gotta, I will probably, I'm, I'm sorry that, you know, that, that, that some people, but I'm gonna, you're going to have to dumb it down. I don't want to be that way, but I, there's no way in God's creation you're going to ever explain the complexity of what's going on. So I have to take it to the least level, like you were talking about, Eric, to what does this mean? And I think the only way you can do that is maybe have them take one residence. Example. One example. Right. Because if you try to sit there and say, well, how is her place and my place different? Well, they shouldn't be. But I guarantee you they are. Because mm -hmm. she's going to get charged a different rate than I am based upon the number of kilowatts that's going through the house, unless she's lighting up the place every night and using more than 10,000. But when you, when you get to rates, if you just say, uh, here is the numbers off a of bill for a family of five in Plainview right. for last year, and nobody gets named and nobody knows who the bill is, this is how it'll change. Yeah, I can do that. And you know, that's gonna work. Pull yep. that example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you, if you do anything other than that. I would just say that's fictitious. <laughs> I would just tell people it's completely fictitious. Yeah, this is just Mr. John Smith. Somebody's going to try to figure it out. Right here. Okay. No, start, but I agree. You can start with the Calvin Fluky residence where everything has to be turned off at 9 o'clock at night and we don't use too much electricity. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get a new lawyer. <laughs> and it will absolutely just uh, dilute the whole uh, rate stuff. Plus the motion detectors come uh, yeah. Date-wise, is there anything to think of just to continue to finish up tonight? Um, 
with all this being said, uh, I, I do need to inform you I will be gone from the 22nd through the 26th. You know, I'll be here on the 21st, but I'm going to fly to Atlanta. I'm doing some um, some of my work on my PhD down in Atlanta, so uh, I'll be back then. On you know, so you can set the dates. I'll also probably be gone on Wednesday of the 29th. Otherwise, I'm here. I would say you just send them out. Of, uh, I would say you pick and, and make who you make it or not make it because I'm going to be gone sometime in September. Myself. So do it, you know, and just kind of set it up because I haven't thought about even setting up the initial one relatively soon, you know. Yeah. I mean, two or three days. I mean, it's hard to consider saying I can be there this day or that day. Yeah. Well, if we're sending that uh, rebranding meeting, the, the final one for the 29th, push it back so you can be there or are you okay with just voting on the final three like everyone else? I will probably not be gone on the 29th so I can be at the rebranding meeting. Well, I no, I mean, I can't move it. It's the, we haven't set that. We haven't right. advertised it. Just let me know I will. what you want me to do. Yeah, I right. would say you set dates and if we can be here, we can. Do you have anything else on the uh, report or anything that you want to commend the staff? It's been a, I mean, I mean, we've had a good month. It's been a good summer. If you haven't noticed, I think that there are a lot of things that have gotten done that we want to get done, but we have been shorthanded again, and I think that a lot of the things, um, despite being shorthanded, have tried to get done. So trees have been removed, uh, stumps have been removed, parks look great. Um, so I'm trying to think of all the things. Kurt's out. Concrete, even though it wasn't the right thing, we're starting to pour concrete and curbs. Pool went great till last Friday. Pool went great. I had nothing to do with the motor going out. I was in North Platte, so don't blame me. Um, it was probably due anyway. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was this week, so. It was, no, I was due in general because of the age, but you're right. Dude. If timing could have been anything, but. Um, yeah, it's a circulator. We're, we're working on it right now to get it fixed while the fall is here, so. Yeah, we were closing yeah. on yeah. Sunday. But yeah, so you lost two days, big deal. Um, so the swimming pool board and the board, I mean, they've had a very good uh, summer uh, revenue-wise. We, we only lost 50000 instead of 60000 So, you know, it works. You know, everything's good. Started draining on it, the pool. Well, what was it? Draining. Draining. Started draining it yet? Oh, no. Yeah. Well, I pulled the motor out this morning and got the Ellen drainer for good, maybe use for some other water. Yeah, because it's got to get dissipated before I want to dump it when we get them, so. Is that everything on your report? Probably more, but I know we're going to start this on the electrical because we promised. Yeah, okay. Bruce, do you have anything? Well, actually, it's kind of a supplement to some of Mike's reports, but I don't have anything else other than that. You see in his stuff he mentioned LB-256. <laughs> What they've done with this new bill is put in place a statute that says you can require owners of vacant property to register and pay a vacant property registration fee every six months, like 200 bucks or 100 bucks. And it's designed to, yeah, within limit, and it's designed to stop the deadbeat mortgage holding out of county people from just sitting there. And you can bill them, rather than prosecuting and fining them, it's an administrative way to keep charging them something every six months and make them pay attention. It's an interesting program. So you like it, so. Yeah, well, I think it's workable. <laughs> there are five copies. We can run more if you want to read up on it. The session laws are annoying to read because Old law is not underlined, and new law is underlined. This is an all new bill. So every speck of it is underlined, which makes it kind of weird to read. But it's all underlined. Uh, they're here, pick one up. But that's otherwise all I got. And we won't go anywhere with that tonight. But when the league gets their ducks in a row and come out with the recommended ordinances, this should be one of them. Yeah, I, 
and, and uh, I, I want to pursue it. And we may have to get after it. Yeah. It's, it's another way to put pressure on these dead <coughs> mortgage holder property owners that don't pay any attention to you. The only thing that concerned me a little bit, Bruce, and I know this is something nobody's wanting to get going, but we went to Senator Breezy, and he's the, um, the author of this bill, and I brought it up to him because I said, I'm going to use it. I would like to sit there and begin because it became law like July 19th or something like that. And he was there on the 18th or 20th or what. And I, and I started to talk to him about it and I was a little discouraged. I'm not so sure he even knew what his own bill was. <laughs> so I tried, I mean, he was trying. I'm not gonna say that he did anything wrong, but it's like, uh, it was the wrong time because he wasn't answering the questions I wanted him to answer about that. Uh, he just kind of did it in general terms. Well, I've got this bill. Well, so. the details are here, and you got to make an effort if you're going to read through it and follow it with some of the grounds. But, uh, I think it's a workable system. I'll bet that will be one of the agenda items when we go in Lincoln in February. It will, but Mr. Mayor, I'm going to make it. you very progressive because I want to use it passed now. Before. Oh, I know. So I'll be bringing it up on some of the properties. And that this sort of thing, thing will put pressure like up on the people with the sign cross out. Correct. That's what it's for. These fly by night somewhere in Timbuktu mortgage holders that acquire title and property and just let them sit there. And then uh, you can put some serious pressure on them with this system. It does apply to commercial buildings as well. It does. Not just Which residential. Is nice for Main Street because we have Different some rates. Mm -hmm. that it But anything's vacant. If it's just unoccupied and they're not doing anything with it, it's not really for And there's exceptions for government buildings, and there's exceptions for winter Texans and stuff like that. But it's a it's a usable system. That's that's all I have. Thank you, Bruce. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys making the copies for to update our book. However, there's some misspellings and inaccuracy in the the dog one. That goes right to American Legal. I don't do any of that. Okay. Um, so like in F, it says at least $25,000 instead of $250,000. And then um, there's a bunch of misspellings in it. So. Really? Well, that doesn't come off. No, no, I haven't even got through them, so I don't know. Yeah, they take off exactly what we said. Mark them and just mark them or mark them on yeah, we can send copy it. them and drop them back to the court. We can send it back to them. they got to fix them to make them look like yeah. our real okay. ordinance. The ordinance itself is correct. That's just your copy right. for the code book. Okay. Yeah, if, they're, if American Legal's type is goofed up, they will mm -hmm. fix it. Yeah, they'll but fix they it. They charge you a pretty penny every year for sure. reprinting so. pages and stuff. <clears throat> that is all I have. Um, okay. I just got two quick ones. On the aging thing, I see you uh, took the 350 deposit and the other 3989. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Old or is back in circulation? Or, okay. And the other one, are we still spraying mosquitoes? Yep, every Monday. Who are we billing for that? I don't see it in claims. Why are you paying it in full? To pay it in spring. I pay it on the pest control and you move over. It's like a forty-seven or five thousand dollar bill. Right. We pay him up front and then he just takes it off of there every month. All right. I get the, I got all the paperwork in my office if you want to come stop and look. I just was looking through claims the past few months and. Free, Mike. <laughs> Why don't you just say it like it is? The, the, the mosquitoes are the size of B-52s right now. That's all I got. Brian, right, you got anything? Two old and one new with the whistle? Whistle, it is, um, I will jump all over Jake to get it done. He has promised us the last two weeks. He's kind of going back to his old city ways, but we do not uh, right. hire him. But I will get him on it immediately. And I didn't look on the actual city website, but I haven't seen anywhere else advertised about the tree trimming above the sidewalks. The, um, and we talked, uh, Kurt and I talked to NCPPB, so we're gonna go ahead and work with them to do the tree trimming and get that all taken care of. I mean, not in parlor, just above the sidewalks. Yeah, that needs to be. Isn't that the property owner? It, it really is. Why are you guys doing this? Right. Well, we, we've always helped out, but NCPPB is gonna come in and trim a lot of that back. Sidewalks. They're going to do secondary and everything. So when you're looking at the sidewalks, uh, chances are those trees are probably running into lines or getting close to lines, and 
they're going to come in and do a very strong uh, tree trimming you know, program because we've got a few uh, places around. And, you know, if we have to from the city side, but if you get it chopped off from the sidewalk, it's going to look, it's going to get pruned and it's going to be kind of straight up and down. So, okay. um, but yeah, we've got that as part of our work order to try to work with the homeowners and work with NCPPD. So. Okay, I guess, I guess we no, oh, I'll say it. I'm ready because if you don't, I'm going to answer it. Answer it. I won't say it. The um, signs are complete. Radar signs are all here. The only thing we're missing is a couple of straps. When they sent them in, these are pretty big items, but we've got all the parts. I, my goal it was to have it before school started yeah, and say. tomorrow, Thursday. And I, all we're waiting for, I told Kurt today, is straps. So he was going to call for He's supposed to let me know. He said they should be here. My son showed up before his, so he's But that's what we have everything ready. Yeah, it'd be nice if we had enough for school. That was that was my intent, and it still is. I mean, we got it in, we just can't hang it. It's been so. over a year process. <laughs> it's, yeah, they're pretty big. Uh, almost yeah, that, and they it's almost throw two, plastic. Almost two, uh, I don't uh, see the point. Of it, after two years, years, it's pretty pointless now. Yeah. These other towns have actually we should have just got our, saved our money and kept it. Not going through this company ever again, just to let you know. Well, just to refresh my memory, a couple months ago, when we were talking about the trash totes, about the businesses and the churches and everything, did we ever get that figured out? Yeah, it's done. It's all done. I don't remember. I've had no complaints. It's been a very. I've had people said from this point. dumpsters to totes. That's it. Okay. I, I just don't remember it. So they all got a letter stating what their new rate would be, and I had. And it was a it was a it was a gesture well needed. So, compliment uh, council person Cornette for recommending that. Anything from the community? I, I assume you're done. Mike. Would you say those town hall meetings are going to be Mike for the NPD thing? I know that you probably didn't have a set date for time. I don't. I'd like to do one Friday. Just it's sometime, Friday. like in the next. I mean, what would you tell your? What's that? I'm cooking hot dogs on. Friday. Oh, that's right. I should bring that up too. And the cat, if we just quit bringing up these things. But the 17th, one of the things that came out of the ECAP process uh, was community uh, more in tune with you know, the, the, everybody around and, and not so divisive. So we have the city along with other entities, I'm going to say the city, but there are some that may help us out, are going to put free hot dogs to everybody in the park and, and buns and we have some buns donated and stuff like that. But, from five to seven. So if you want to represent the city and just say hi to the newcomers, it's anybody wants a free hot dog, just come out to Children's Park. We do a s'mores or no s'mores? That's up to you. <laughs> we asked that same question today. We asked that today. Is the school park at Snow or new? I have heard a lot of comments about that. Please stop. I have heard a lot of compliments about the memorial in the Shoulders Park, Jason Memorial. And Cole, since he was in the paper that he built it, has received like six phone calls asking people to build the same structure in their yard. <laughs> He's told them all no, but. Um, Can I make one suggestion if he does that? He needs to make it a little bit bigger because the swings bang into each other. He did it on purpose. So you couldn't so go they would slow down and wouldn't be banging. So you couldn't go over the fire and you couldn't go kind of All right. wild. Well, it was by design. Explanation. It went up there the it was by design. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so so it won't be Friday there. I'd like to get this during the first one. Okay, I'll just say to be determined. Uh, probably probably to be determined during the next week. It'll be next week. We, yeah, I want to get as quick as possible. Like Tentatively. Like yeah. Make a motion to adjourn. I second that. James. Yeah.